The condition that you keep yourself in, is that typically where you stay all year long? Not the contest that you did, but maybe some from some of the photos that you've recently put up on the beach and whatnot. Yeah, the most recent, I put up a photo and a reel, which was like within the last month, I, I typically stay around that level of body fat year round. It doesn't fluctuate that much. And if it does go up a little bit, then I sort of try and bring it down a bit. I always want to sort of be within striking range of, you know, being able to get bodybuilding photos or or to compete i don't like to be too far out you know to where i have to spend 20 plus weeks losing body fat at an appropriate rate yeah i just don't think either end of that spectrum is healthy just being super shredded year round or like carrying too much body fat i don't think it's healthy and i've i've read well the more i've read over the years the more i've come to realize it's it seems to be easier to gain lean muscle tissue when you're not carrying too much body fat. So I, I try not to find myself in that state. I think based on experience, I believe that as well. Call it anecdotal, but I do think that when I have had more body fat and then I've lost it, it's not like I gained any more muscle in comparison to when I've had less body fat and trained and ate the exact same way, just kept my body fat in check. I was definitely gaining lean muscle tissue without having to jeopardize my body fat percentage. How far would you say you stay away from stay so let's say the recent contest you did, were you in terms of striking distance 10 pounds away from that level of condition or was it closer? Uh, well, probably more if we're talking about pounds, probably maybe a little bit more, maybe like, yeah, within sort of 10 to 15 pounds, I'd say. So I think in kilos, I was like, I, I'm usually around 92, 93. And I, I think I actually got down to about 80. Uh, I might've been like 88 on stage. So it's not a, it's not a massive loss by any means. That's really close because a lot of the natural competitors yeah. will, they will climb up to 20 30 plus pounds over stage weight right yeah that's not yeah. that's not uncommon even maybe even in, within the enhanced realm i'm not sure it's not really i'm not focusing yeah. too much on that but from who i've spoken no, I to the same case i think it's yeah? the same case i think even it, it could even be more with enhanced uh, bodybuilders because i think there's a lot more water weight as well they seem to retain a lot more water but um it is like there's people i know now that are around the 100 kilogram mark and they'll they'll get down to you know 70 78 kilos when they compete like it's a massive loss of weight and that i don't think is healthy at all right right so let's say you're trying to build muscle like you're in a period where you don't have any shows coming up per se like how meticulous are you with tracking your food in order to try to gain is it as simple as just sprinkling in a little extra here and there how do you like to go about it for muscle growth yeah, I'm not that meticulous when it comes to counting anything. I don't count, you know, I don't track my macros. I don't count calories. But what I do is eat a few select whole foods, like whether it be eggs, steak. I don't eat much chicken, sometimes turkey, like turkey mince. And a few select vegetables and fruit is sort of an important part of the, the diet as well. Like I'll always have that post-workout. Yeah, I'd be taking in more calories, but... It's also like the training will change a little bit uh, leading into a competition. The intensity obviously over the weeks will increase. I try not to play all my cards at once. So by that, I mean like, you know, you have calorie restriction, cardio, you're increasing training intensity. I try and increase the intensity in sort of small ways over the, the course of say 12 to 15 weeks before the competition. Whereas when I'm just like now I'm trying to gain, I'm trying to see if it's possible to gain more muscle naturally. It's not that I'm not training as intensely. I'm training very intensely, but I'm not focused on shortening the rest periods or doing as many drop sets or things like that or supersets. I'm, I am actually trying now and just to test the theory to see if this works for me to increase the the weight a little bit, maybe drop the rep ranges a little, still keep it very intense. And then it's really simple things. Like if I had before, for breakfast, like when I was in my peak condition, I was having maybe like four eggs, wilted spinach and some onion or something for breakfast. I'll just increase that to sort of like five or six eggs. And then the next meal or like that sort of pre and post workout meal, I'll just have more sweet potato than I did previously. It's just little things like that so that I don't actually have to be that meticulous about counting every calorie and tracking everything. It's uh, just a more simplistic way of approaching it. And it tends to, well, it has worked for me, so I'll continue doing it that way. And it's, this is actually what I encourage other people to do as well, because even particular foods are going to have a different physiological effect, you know, between person to person. So I try and encourage everyone to learn their body and without, you know, getting so caught up, especially in calories, because 
I mean, um, maybe you're aware, but a lot of people aren't that if you're, you've set yourself out a particular number of calories per day and that, you know, you have this allowance, people tend to waver from what is going to benefit their body best. Like, you know, if we're talking about like anti-inflammatory properties in pineapple or like root vegetables providing there's a mineral within like those root vegetables that can help sort of increase natural testosterone, things like that. If you're just ignorant to all that and you're just basing your diet around how many calories you can have per day, I can guarantee you the result, if, say if it was 3,000 calories per day of like eating whatever you wanted versus 3,000 calories, but you're, you're more focused on the micronutrient value of all the foods you're taking in, you will see a better result if you focus more on what you're eating rather than just like this total calorie caloric amount. If we go to your diet specifically, are you in terms of high sugar, high processed foods, are you ever consuming any of these things considering how you look? I would be curious given the situation or is it on occasion? How do you like to do that? Yeah, it's it's definitely like on a, on a rare occasion. There's times in which like I haven't prepared well enough to, you know, say if I'm, I'm going out or something like that, or it's a family function or special occasion, then I won't care so much, but I still make a conscious effort to like avoid those like hyper marketed moralist companies. I just hate the idea of like supporting companies that it's the kind of products like the food, like imitation products, where it's essentially like a board of people have decided on something that's going to be hyper insatiable, you know, hyper profitable and serving pretty much nothing for the person consuming it like that kind of stuff like skittles for example or oh, just anything like anything packaged like so if i do have something it might be pizza or, or burgers or something but it's going to be either homemade or it's going to be like made from i'll go to like there's a couple of local local restaurants here where like they make that stuff fresh so at least i'm getting sort of the best version of that possible it's not like I'm immune to the, the culture. I do eat pretty well year round, but like everyone, like everyone has their biases and food for me is definitely like one of those things. Like I just love food, but I'll still make conscious choices. That, so it's not just like absolute crap. Like it's not, it's at least serving me some, you know, nutritional value. Right. Well, I did see that video you Brock and Artemis did with the, uh, where you destroyed the, sh was it Shake Shack you guys went to? And he crushed like, I don't know how many fries and burgers you guys did. I think that was after an event though. Uh, so it was like a social thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the end of that. The second trip that I did with Artemis. There really, <laughs> there really wasn't that much food consumed. I think we had ate just shortly before then, like we were starving. I think we ended up having some, some steak and cream of rice or something in the RV. And then but the idea was to make this video. Artemis wanted to make the video. And I think I had like one burger. I was feeling sick. It was an illusion you know, that we ate that much, but it wasn't that much. It's interesting. The vlogs and what people put out, you can't always think what you see is what it is, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting right. how that works. Yeah, for sure. For you specifically, what was it that intrigued you to stay natural, like to do the natural bodybuilding thing? Because of course you have the naysayers online that are constantly accusing you of not being natural, but for anybody who's in natural bodybuilding can clearly see that you are. It's no secret that you have a physique that emulates Arnold Schwarzenegger, so it could be easily taken that maybe you would have gone down that path.